Now, what, what you have to understand is that as a child, as a young guy, I was 18 years old, barely, when this happened, and I thought, well, you know, what am I supposed to do with this? So I would go back to my dorm. I come back from this experience, by the way. I am sort of have an anti-gravity field around me, so I could go like from here to the wall over there in one bound. It was like moonwalking. It was really cool. And I had this lightness about me, and it was very blissful. It was wonderful. So I was going back down, and I was going, going to, back down from the um, far tar. And as I was going down from the far tar, we, uh, as I got to town, I thought there had been a nuclear war because this buzzing weirdness above my head. Um, and so the reason I thought that there had been nuclear wars, everything was shuttered and shut down in town. It was a little college town. Uh, and it turned out, that, you know, I thought it was like 9 o'clock. It was midnight or after, and I went, oh, my God, space-time, boom, vanished in this experience, which I'm sure some of you have had. And I had to, had to break into the dorm, got in trouble, because back then there were curfews for 18-year-olds in college. But at any rate, I began to practice this, and every time I would, go, uh, I would go to bed, I would go into this meditative state, I would go into this state of quiet awareness and unbounded mind. I would remote view where the ET craft were, either out in space or around the Earth. I would introduce myself, and then I would show them where I was. And so I would show them Earth, North America, East Coast, Appalachian Mountains, the town of Boone, all the way in, boom. Every night I did it, there were sightings by the rangers and the police all in that area, documented. I went, holy crap, this works. Now I'm 18 years old, so what are you going to do with this? Um, years go by, I do this a few times, and I describe these experiences in the book, and some of them are rather hilarious. Um, par example, I was up in uh, Isola, France, when I, in 1975, and I just turned 20, and I was learning to become a meditation teacher, because before I was a trauma doctor, I was a meditation teacher. So while everybody else was dropping acid and chasing skirts, I was spending six to eight hours a day in meditation. And, uh, so that's what I did with my misspent youth. And uh, so I haven't had an ordinary life, but so what? Uh, normal is so greatly overrated. Uh, <laughs> forget about it. Um, so what happened was that we were, <laughs> we were out. I, I decided one morning on just a wild hair, I thought, you know, is this an imagination? Could I really go into this state of consciousness and see these people from other star systems and show them where I am and they will come. So I did at the end of about th three hours of meditation. And so, uh, w which was my usual program that morning, we were doing about six to eight hours a day in deep uh, samadhi meditation. And I was way up in the French Alps, up above Nice in the Maritime Alps, if you've been there, beautiful. And it was a crystal clear day. And so after lunch, I go hiking around one or two out in the hills with some friends and you know, I'm thinking about this. Suddenly, a massive tetrahedral-shaped ET craft, seamless, materialized in blue sky, close. And, of course, one of my friends are going, what, uh, WTF, you know, what the heck's going on here? And I said, oh, well, I invited them. And they said, oh, my God, and one of them was, like, falling apart. You know, I'm terrified. Why is this happening? And it kept drawing closer and closer and closer. And as soon as they sensed her fear, stopped. And then it stopped, and it backed off, and it receded, and then just vanished, literally dematerialized in a crystal blue sky, witnessed by multiple people. So I went, oh, well, this does work. So then in 1977, being the doubting Thomas and being raised like I was by utter skeptics, uh, my parents and, and family and some aerospace people, I decided, well, let me try this one more time. So I was back up in the mountains of North Carolina near a town called Blowing Rock, and I was running a meditation center and this and that. And um, I'd finished college when I was 20, so I said, oh, well, let's do this, it's great. So this was maybe in 77, 78, I have to look at the book. But anyway, I was like 22, 23. And one night, I'm sitting up, and before I would go to bed, I would always do, I did this meditation. I said, oh, I'm going to do this again. Big mistake. So I had a roommate or a housemate that had a room next to mine. And so I went into this state of consciousness, went into a deep, quiet state of mind, connected, showed them where I was located. And I actually said, my name is Steve Greer. You may not remember me. This is how, you know, it was kind of 
I look back on it, it's kind of cute. Uh, you may not remember me, but I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina, so I took them to Charlotte from deep space. They were way out in interstellar space. Showed them Charlotte, and then I showed them the hospital where I was born, Mercy Hospital. Here's an irony. Born in a Catholic hospital, my parents were atheists. You go figure. Anyway, so, so and then I brought them from there up to the Northwest Mountains, up to the mountains up near Blowing Rock, North Carolina, so, and then I go to sleep. Well, I wake up, and here is this beautiful craft, fully materialized, outside the window of my bedroom. And oh, my housemate's bedroom as well, uh, and, uh, which were next to each other. And it's this beautiful beam of sort of bluish light coming in. And I, I'm fully awake. And the consciousness, now get this, the ET, one of the ETs on the craft, as a senior diplomat, interstellar diplomat, was in the room, but not visible with the naked eye because he was resonating faster than the speed of light. And it's like electronic astral projection. If you've ever had an out-of-body experience or a flying lucid dream, imagine electronics that allow that to be transmitted. That's what we're talking about. I'm going to show you one of these that just happened at Joshua Tree because we got the image and it blipped in and we photographed this beam from Andromeda, this particular ET. It's a stunning picture, most amazing thing I've ever seen. Uh, just happened a couple days ago. Anyway, we're getting ahead of myself. Here's what happened. So I'm there con connecting with this ET in consciousness, and I can sense it and feel it, and I can remote viewing, but there's nothing there. It's like empty air except this sort of weird energy field. You know, sort of like if you look at a mirage in the desert and there's sort of a heat disturbance, it's like that kind of thing, but the shape of a person. So I said, oh, okay. Then my roommate busts into the, my room and said, what the heck? Did you invite them here? I said, yes. Well, the whole house was filled with the awareness of these beings. It was very benign, but he came, fell apart like a $3 watch. And so the ET went zap. The craft moved around to the front of the house. I went out in the living room to look at it, and I saw it make this beautiful, it went, and it made this beautiful arc and went out into space over Grandfather Mountain, which is one of the big mountains there in that part of the, of, of the Appalachian chain. And so after that, I said, I'm never doing this again. Later I found out that the FAA in Charlotte, the famous case that you heard about, the Snoopy helicopter case, the police helicopter that encountered this, these two ET craft and the Eastern Airline pilot saw it and it was over the area of the city where I was born and born in this hospital, in Mercy Hospital. And then it was seen, one of them kind of vanished and the other one was seen going off, quote, towards the Northwest Mountains the night. And I have the, the night I was doing this and I have the FAA tape of this, that someone spirited out of the FAA archives. I have it, proof that this happened. So after that, I thought, I'm never going to do this again. I mean, I got a police helicopter scrambled. I got my roommate freaked out. And then in 1990, I'm a doctor. You know, we fast forward 17 years. I won't bore you with everything in between. Not that it was boring. I have four kids, working as an emergency doctor, living in this ginormous house next to the Biltmore house in, in North Carolina, uh, the Biltmore Castle. And we have this big lawn, this big several acres, and beautiful. Uh, the firm that did Central Park uh, and Golden Gate Park, that firm did the landscaping for this place. Stunningly beautiful. And so it's late at night, and there's a craft out there. And I'm basically invited to go with them, so I do. And it's all in the book. And that's when C-SETI started. I was asked to form the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence to do really three things. And now there are three big projects. One, train people to make interstellar contact for universal peace because the time has come and our governments have dropped the ball. Number two, disclose this fact to the public and to our leaders in such a way that it will move our civilization forward. And number three, bring out the technologies that would replace all the oil, gas, and coal in the world using these advanced energy and propulsion systems. And that's what we're doing with the orionproject.org.